Okay, so uh, what's going on? This is going to be a tutorial about um, how to find the discrete time Fourier transform of the delta function. And it's more of a, an explanation really because you can go and look it up and it's actually just equal to the number one. And how is this possible? So I'm going to go through and mathematically prove that uh, it is possible. So the equation for the DTFT is we have capital X e to the j omega is equal to the sum and is negative infinity to positive infinity of our signal times e to the negative j omega n right and note that these square brackets mean discrete time whereas these curly brackets mean continuous time so um, the output this is showing that the output or the uh, the output frequency domain signal is continuous so even if even though you have even though your input signal is discrete your output is continuous so if we look at the delta function over here on this graph that i poorly made outside the frame we can draw the delta function and if it's a non-shifted delta function its value is only going to be greater than zero when n is equal to zero so basically we can draw a line here and then it's just going to be zero all the way to positive infinity and all the way to negative infinity and that's a very poor drawing but you get you get what i'm trying to say so that is the delta function right so if we are looking at if we say let's plug in our delta function for the dtft so we have the sum n equals negative infinity to infinity of delta n e to the negative j omega n if we're summing all of these this part right here it's going to be zero for all n not equal to zero okay so if we have zero times whatever it is it's just going to be zero so this sum can essentially go away and all we need to look at is just this n equals zero point because the sum is essentially going to be 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus some value at n equals 0, right? Plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. So we can just get rid of all these and just look at this one spot. Okay? So if we do that, what we have is we have delta zero times e to the negative j omega times zero sorry my camera's shaking when i'm doing this but um if we have the delta function of zero that by definition is just one and then times anything to the zeroth power because this is just going to be zero because anything times zero is zero so we basically just have e to the zero and that is one also one times one is equal to one and that's our answer so yep thanks for watching